On today's episode of Watch Jergo After Action Report, the Audi S4 and I went racing. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go and like I said, I am here with my 2000 Audi S4 B5 from Car Trek 5. This was Ed Bolian's old car. And now it's mine and I, I it's hard to tell you guys that I truly love driving this car. Like if there's a list of cars that I actually drive, it's my F250, that's always number 1. And then uh between my R35 GTR and this, it's a straight tie. Maybe that's because they're the same car. They're both twin turbo V6 all wheel drive monsters. I think the GTR is a lot better at being that monster, but this thing, oh, this car, it's just so rewarding. And boy, did it reward me back at this track day. I can't really tell you anything about the race, but I can tell you it's at the fastest lap of the day. And there's, uh, I mean, with a two second margin. That's how crazy this car is. But. Today we're here to talk about everything else. Not the race, but the car. And the car did wonderfully. I talked to so many people before this, and of course we all thought my N75 braking, that valve that controls the boost, we thought that was gonna be the end of the world because it was spiking to like 27 PSI. Well, I zip tied that valve back together. I'll show you that right now. Those two zip ties right there are holding that thing together onto its like T base. It's just a solenoid valve with a plunger. It all fell apart and luckily, nothing moved we used a magnet picked up all the pieces and put the valve back together and then zip tied it and it held and boost control seemed wonderful of course we fixed that brake booster line which may have solved a lot of problems in the last video where we worked on the car and uh sometime during the race the air filter literally fell off which is kind of hilarious it was probably just loose i will say after about uh i think five to six laps you run out of meth so this is the washer tank it holds one gallon and I've gone to straight washer fluid instead of adding the heat at this point. Washer fluid from O'Reilly's is 37% pure methanol and the remaining is water. And I was kind of mixing that with a bunch of heat. Heat is actual pure methanol. Um, it's kind of the perfect replacement when you're on the road because uh, you can find that everywhere, the yellow heat everywhere. But I was mixing 50-50 with water methanol using heat and washer fluid. Now I've just gone to straight O'Reilly's washer fluid. And let me tell you, when this thing runs out of methanol, oh, it feels so down on power. The magic disappears from the car. You can feel the, the power leaving its body. It's, it's kind of like it died and went to heaven and then the misfires show up and you have to stop beating on the car. Uh, it's a huge, huge, huge difference in power, how the car runs, everything about it. But it did give me an excuse to go do one of the craziest things I've ever done that I thought was absolutely hilarious. I went to O'Reilly's and bought an entire case of washer fluid and I was out there blowing through it, uh, just keeping bottles beside the track so I could stop and pour it in between rounds. And it would take, you know, a gallon and I'd get five, six laps, something like that. And then it's time for another gallon because the car was down on power. Other people had told me your brakes aren't gonna keep up. On the S4, they always fade. Well, of course you guys know, we have talked about this. I have Porsche brakes and these brakes are incredible. The abuse they took, I would just get in there and stand on the pedal and it would shut this thing down. You can tell though, they are much more heat checked than they used to be. Uh, they used to just be heat checked. Now they're like black and heat checked or blued from the amount of heat that did go into these brakes, but they never ever let me down, shutting this car down like a boss every single time I ask it to. And the best part about this is this wheel changed colors. If you look right here, you can see the silver wheels. And if you look right here, you can see that this wheel literally turned yellow. And it's like this half of it is the most yellow part, but there was so much heat in this wheel from the brakes that it, uh, it changed colors. So you can tell I was actually using the brakes. These wheels are covered in brake dust, but it was perfect. It was perfect. Now I will say these tires were absolutely worthless. I, uh, if I would have had tires, we would have been way, way, way faster. So I actually did have them. Fitment Industries and I talked before this. They did an act of God and overnighted me tires out of their warehouse via FedEx and FedEx slapped a delivery exception on it and delivered those tires three days after they shipped them. Here in the back of the truck, we have my brand new 
PS4s that are ready to go on the car. And I think we would have been much, much, much faster on a tire. But uh, you know what? We dealt with what we had and the all wheel drive is basically magic. Now there was a better driver than me on track for sure. Uh, Tyler Potter was there and you guys know him. He's been on the channel. He races his ZL1 Camaro almost nonstop. Like that guy is fast and he did not beat me. My lap time was two seconds faster than him. And he was, I, he's in a good car. Not that I would have beat him in his car. His car would have smoked me, but he was in someone else's car. Oh man, these rotors are blue too. Oh man, we put some heat in these. And if you remember, I never even got to change the brake fluid. I wanted to put RBF 700 in this car, but the wheels were already on and Josh and I didn't have time to do that work. I'd also like to do the clutch fluid. Obviously everything else is new. All Motul fluids front to back, engine oil, uh, front diff and transmission, rear diff, and really all that was left was the brakes. But they still held up. They held up. I may have to put brakes all the way around this car. I'm gonna have to go drive in, see if I can get rid of the bluing. Uh, it has not been off the trailer because I smoked this wheel bearing. Halfway through the session, you start to hear a little bit of a noise. Um, it was definitely like a heavy drone as I was putting heat in those bearings, but I had to keep driving the car because we came to win, <laughs> not to play games. And by the end, it sounded like a broken CV. It was so loud. It was worrying before Jake and I heard it. Now it's just outrageously loud when it's hot. When it's cool, it's fine. So I, you know, drove back on the trailer, zero noise at all. So uh, as long as you're not putting a bunch of speed in it, you can move the car. It did let me finish driving the car onto the trailer. And I'm so happy I had the trailer. Do it, Zach, hit the button. Thank you, got it. Thank, thank you, got it. Thank, thank you, got it. Did you get it? Thrilled that I had the trailer. Couldn't have done it without it because I would not want to drive it home at that level of damage. It's definitely gonna need, I'm gonna do both rear wheel bearings. It's just time. It's got 233,000 miles on it. Who knows if they've ever been done. And uh, it's just good maintenance no matter what. They're not even that expensive. I think it's 50 bucks for the pair with new axle bolts. At the end of the day, the track day was amazing. So much fun. I couldn't be happier with how this car did. Now the results are sitting right there and you guys will see those in about six months when you can see the full video of the track day. Until then, let's talk about this bus. What on earth? So what Zach is over here finishing up, Zach's here from Snappery Styling, of course, the wrap company in Wichita, and he is doing a quick color change on this 2001 Geelig or Geelig bus. This is an old Wichita city bus. Uh, many people knew immediately what it was by the pattern down the side. That was the Wichita pattern. You can still kind of see it underneath the wrap. They sent this out to a body shop and had them like quickly sand it down and then just said slap some black over it so we can put it in service. So he did the magic. This bus is now black. You can see that it kneels. It's got the front end like just slammed to the ground because it is on air there. It has the handicap accessibility system with like a ramp that comes down for wheelchairs or whatever you need. And of course the bus drops to within six inches of the ground to make life easy loading and unloading. Now this thing weighs 30,000 pounds with no passengers in it. 40,000 pounds with passengers. You can hold 42 people plus 16. I don't even know what the plus 16 means. I assume 42 was the front and 16 was the back. So this is an obvious party bus conversion. Let's turn the lights on. Battery disconnect. Hiding right in here. It's a very, very, very nice hardware. One of the best battery disconnects I've ever seen in my life. This is solid. There we go, it's connected. We've got engine access back here. Zach's reinstalling all the lights because this thing leaves in just a few minutes. Check this out though. Ooh, <laughs> what a monster of an engine. So this thing is some gigantic diesel. I'm not sure what it is actually. Jared, what's this diesel, diesel man? It's something new because it's an 01, but like a caterpillar, is that what that valve cover is? Probably a Cummins. Yeah, I guess it could be a Cummins. It's whole set turbo, so probably a Cummins, huh? Cummins loves to use their whole sets. Looks like a Cummins. Yep. So one of the coolest things about this is it has this ignition select. You can move the ignition to the rear of the vehicle. You saw the lights just flash there. So you can do diagnostics on the engine without going up to the front. You just flip the switch and hit the button and this thing will start up. We've got huge 
compressors, air compressors and everything hanging off of this thing. I mean, the intake piping is like six inch, seven inch. What a monster of a vehicle. And what do we have? Oh, shop air. You got some short air right there. You can just hook it up. If the thing's not running, you need to work on the brakes or something. And right here we have what looks like air pressure and water temp. All LED lights. We've got the LED signs up there that can display the route. V-twin, uh, V-twin air, air compressor. conditioner compressor. Yep, some wild air conditioning on this monster. <laughs> monster, look at the clutch. Look at that clutch <laughs> is the size of some of the biggest crank pulleys there are. Probably a V4 with a high pressure and low pressure cylinder on each side. This is why I hate heavy duty. You can't lift the thing. You don't have tools that you can use on the thing. Like none of this works unless you are a heavy duty shop. It's the only way you can really work on this. What's under here? Got a little access panel, DPFM. So that's the water fill. And we've got some side glasses in there. Huh. It's weird that an O1 has a diesel particulate filter. It is. Early, early. Graphics are on now, it's getting there. Uh, so this thing's on real Alcoas and semi-truck tires, 315, 80, 22, fives. That's like the usual semi tire there. And uh, of course it's got the torque marks all the way around. You line them all up so you know that they're torqued. If any of the arrows point the wrong way, uh, the torque is off. Like if a nut happens to back off, it would be pointing over there. So you quickly visually check to make sure your torque is correct. Uh, of course, those wheels are amazing, made in America at the Alcoa plant. Let's hop in this bus. So uh, now we can have some lights. This is the ignition switch, if you guys didn't know. Lights. And these switches are party. Cup holders and LEDs. <laughs> uh, we've got a big TV back here and benches throughout. It looks like they used to have a system in here. All the audio cables are hiding right there. You can see all the original bus stuff here. Reading lights for everybody, even though they appear to be disabled. Uh, vents for the AC all the way through. The windows do open, which is really cool. They all work super nicely as these buses tend to do. Second set of doors back here. And uh, the signs look like they fired up. The LED signs outside, they show you what route is active for this bus special so there's a controller inside i think it's called a twin something where you can set the route and what message is displayed when they're out of use or uh you know maintenance special whatever's going on with the bus flip up bike rack in the front here's the twin vision controller for all the led signs that are all the way around the bus the small ones scroll the big ones can display it static this is either the keyboard for that or diagnostics that's probably a some kind of flash card oh yeah look at that i think that's compact flash that's old school right there. Um, diagnostics for the bus or for that, one of the two. Um, 40,000 pounds is the GVWR, 30,000 with no load. And we've got a giant tilting wheel, which is pretty cool. Electric horn instead of air horn. Let's run through these switches here real quick. We've got reading lamps, speakers for a public address, um, fair box light. If you have a fair system, this one's been taken out. Driver's lamp this one right here so you can see at night electric mirrors which is really cool um, there's the air brakes right there i have no idea what that one is but it is one crazy switch you can hear relays it does something hazards that's a big old switch whenever the things come up to a stop flip on your hazards there's the door controls of course the ignition and lights engine start engine idle there's your fast idle control maybe you need some more ac something like that there's the bus's chime air conditioning, interior lamps, the Allison transmission control. Obviously it's an automatic, which is awesome. So you can just punch, drive and go. Windshield washers, fan, temps. Uh, this is all climate right there. These are the dash light controls right there. We've got oil temp, oil pressure, uh, water temp, which is all awesome to have. Your service air gauge right there, accessory air right there, speedo and more climate control action right there. Heated mirrors, which is really cool. These things obviously run in most weather. Defrost fan, engine test, which I don't actually know what that is. Maybe glow plugs or something weird. Uh, turn signals are down here on the floor. You need a left turn, punch that guy right there, hold it. 
And if you need a right turn, punch that guy right there. Passenger lift power right there, that's the wheelchair lift. These are all the controls for that. And this is the bus's uh, kneel position. You can have it raise or kneel or just sit off. It looks like the fuel gauge might be broken in this. We've got an aftermarket one, just a quick thing that's but crimped on. Lamp test, of course, to check every light in the control panel. This is super cool. There are so many status lights in this bus. So, really sweet. They are LED for sure. They turn on and off fast. Driver window, slides. We've got a bell up here. I'm not quite sure. Probably to tell you when the bus is stopping. And this is your shade. Pulls down and then you pull this to release this. So you might not have to have sunglasses if you can just block the sun out of your vision. And of course the passenger compartment mirror, if you're sitting back here chilling, you can see the entire passenger compartment very well. This is a 180 horse Cummins and uh, it's leaving right this second. Zach is done. They ask him not to wrap the rear and the front. Uh, they're gonna do something else on there, like full print. So let's move the S4 and this thing can get out of here. Just like that, the bus is gone. And all the wrap scrap. Dude, somebody threw away a good pair of boots. Oh no, not a good pair of no. boots. The Audi is unloaded. The car is back inside. This is our oil leak, which may have gotten worse. It does seem like it may have gotten quite a bit worse, actually. And now it shoots uh, plumes of smoke when it starts. We may have killed the turbo, but it was still worth it. We all know those turbos were hanging on by a thread and I think the track day may have cut the thread. Let's start it one more time and uh, see if the plume comes back. Oh yeah, she smokes now. A little bit of black smoke there too. They say you'll hear the dentist drill if the turbos are dying in an S4, so. That sounds like a kind of typical turbo spool, but also a little bit louder than it should be. Here's our failed wheel bearing. This one sounds all right. We're gonna do both, obviously. Probably put both rear CVs on. They haven't been done in a long time. Looks like the rear didn't leak at all. We've got all of our plugs and everything, which is good. Yep, all, everything's still tight, but the oil concentration here, this whole driver's side is very wet again, and it looks like this turbo is toast. Look at all the oil all over the bottom of that thing. It is a disaster. I'm just gonna guess that driver's side turbo is finished. And this one here looks wonderful. No leaks, no problems there. But uh, it's probably time for both turbos. If you're gonna do one, you do them both. Also this boot, I don't think it was cut before. Uh, it is definitely cut now. But other than that, this car did absolutely amazing. I couldn't be more happy with it. For $4,500, it went out and dominated on track. So there you go, that is the after action report from my S4, the Car Trek S4. What an amazing car. Uh, and honestly, drive, I've never driven an all wheel drive car on track before. I'm usually out there with rear wheel drive stuff where you can like rotate with the throttle. With this, you can pull the front end around with the throttle, which is incredible. The Quattro all wheel drive system. I can't say enough good things about it. It's the reason I set those track times. Whenever it would start sliding, I'd be pushing out to the edge. It'd be, you know, in a complete slide, third gear and all four tires are spinning and I could see it pushing and pushing and pushing. I'd slam that thing back down into second and just mat the throttle. I'd have about 2000 RPM to play with uh, after I shifted down to second, just leave it on the floor eating and eating and eating and the front wheels would just pull that thing around at the last second and never let me go off, which was incredible. What an experience to drive an all wheel drive monster on the track, uh, it's wild. Be cool if I got my R8 out there sometime. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you 
next time while we rebuild and go do this again. I really, I think the brakes are fine, but they sure are blue. That was a lot of heat. Usually you don't run like 14 laps in a row in something like this. It's obviously not like a complete race car. And just what it takes to have a race car that can go out and do endurance racing is unbelievable. There was a time where Potter and I stopped mid track and waited because we were tired of beating on the cars. And we were both, I think we were getting hot and you could see the temps creeping up a little bit. And we were like, we should just stop. <laughs> we let the rest of the track catch up. <laughs>